we bought the camera just prior to going to Fort Hardy for a summer assignment before going to the University of Illinois. The first couple pictures we tried were black and white positives. We soon switched to color. I was 21 in the summer of 1946. One of our favorite outings was to picnic at Clamshell Island in the bay near our house. Our neighbor, Uncle Willie, was a retired lighthouse keeper who spent most of his time sawing wood on the beach. I stopped in Edmonton on my way from Port Hardy to Illinois. This is Mother in front of her apartment. Doll with Jack, Janet, and Alan. Janet in her dancing costume. Dave, Hazel, and Vicky. This is Vicky, almost age two. This is the big old house we bought in Champaign. We rented extra rooms to other students and remodeled the house so we could sell it at the end of our year. That's me just sitting in the knitting. The Baroness came to Illinois with us. My brother Bill came down to visit us in Champaign-Urbana. We loved the football. The Fighting Illini won the Rose Bowl that year. And we loved the senior prom. Tommy Dorsey played for the dance that evening. Dick had bought me some Chinese finery in Shanghai and wanted some pictures of it. The spots are on the slide, not on my face. We visited Lincoln Park. This was Lincoln's home when he worked in Springfield, Illinois. And this is Lincoln's tomb in Springfield, Illinois. We enjoyed going to Chicago every now and then. This is the main drag at night. This is Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. We're on our car trip back to Seattle with Dick's mother now. We loved Yellowstone Park. Old Faithful just starting to blow. Getting near its peak of of the blow right here. Yellowstone Canyon and Yellowstone River are also very scenic. Then we headed into uh, Glacier National Park and Waterton National Park in southern Alberta. We stopped to marvel at Grand Coulee Dam in eastern Washington. We dropped Dick's mother in Seattle picked up his father and headed for California. Our first stop was Crater Lake. Then a stop at Shasta Lake in Northern California. Dick's cousin, Mark Stevens, worked on building the Shasta Dam. And then we arrived in Berkeley. I'm not sure why Dick wanted this crazy picture. We came back to Seattle via the California coast and the Oregon coast. His first assignment with the Pacific Division was Okinawa. I was pregnant and went back to Edmonton while he was there. This is Okinawa and its airport. The baby was stillborn in Edmonton we came back to California. This is at Donner Summit. Bobby Westberg and I took a trip up to Victoria. This is the Capitol building almost 50 years ago. And the Victoria Hotel. And Dick took a trip to Hong Kong. This is the Crown Colony from the peak on the Hong Kong Island. The junks are picturesque. 
His next assignment was station manager at Portland and where Kathy was born. This is Kathy coming home from the hospital at about six days old. She was about 10 days old for these pictures. In her crib, and not too happy on the couch, but loving her bath. Your father discreetly placed the washcloth to save her embarrassment. In her crib with the big doll that was mine when I was a little kid. She's a couple months old here. The Baroness chose keeping her face clean as her motherly contribution. You can see how moist her eye is. It had to be operated on when she was one to open the tear duct. Not in the mood for a picture today. At about seven or eight months old with a little playmate. in the bathtub with Katie Kay, who was about two months younger than Kathy. As you can see, I've sorted the slides pretty much chronologically. They're not all included, uh, just samplings of the trips we took, but I have included all the slides of family and pets. Roger and Bobby Westberg came to visit us. This is Bobby, the Baroness, and I up at Mount Hood. Kathy, just after New Year's, she's almost nine months old here. Her first birthday party in Portland with Katie Kay. I crocheted all those jackets and hats. Kathy and Baron has got to be pretty good friends. Taking time to smell the roses. We were being transferred from Portland to Vacaville, so Kath and I went up to Edmonton for a little trip. Kath loved to wear mother's hats. Kathy with Janet and Alan. Alan, he was about five here. And Janet. Jack, Janet, and Alan. Jack would be about 12 or 13 here. Doll, she hated having her picture taken. Staying cool in Vacaville in the middle of August was a full-time job. It was 110 degrees and the house wasn't air-conditioned. Stinson Beach was the best way to cool off. Kath was around 14 or 15 months old here. After Vacaville, Dick got transferred to Bangkok for six or seven months, and I stayed in San Bruno and got a job with United Airlines. The Baroness in San Bruno. Dick had the camera with him in Bangkok. When he got back, we took a trip up to Sun Valley, Idaho. Kathy liked the swing and riding the donkey and her new feathered friends. And they liked her, especially when she was eating. I liked the bike riding. Then back to California with a stop in Virginia City. That's Kathy sitting on the curb. The end of October 1951, we were transferred to Honolulu, licking the egg beaters 
on Waikiki with Paul Miller and Katie Kay, who had been stationed at Portland with us. Christmas in Lanakai, Hawaii. On the beach in front of our house in Lanakai, where both Kathy and I learned to swim, on her Christmas bicycle, Kath and I took a trip up to Edmonton. Bill and Roger came over from Winnipeg to have a visit with us. Bill with Kathy at Mother's apartment in Edmonton. Roger and Kathy. Brother Dave, who by then was working in Edmonton. Kath with Dave's daughters, Margaret and Kathy. Margaret's a year older than Kathy, and Kathy Mills is two weeks younger. Kathy Mills, Kathy Slater, and Margaret Mills. Dave with the two Kathys and Margaret. We were transferred to Canton Island at the end of 1952 when Dory was four weeks old. The Canton slides are arranged by geography, wildlife, facilities, people, events, pictures of the kids, and a few selected pictures of trips we took. First, an aerial view of Canton. It, the island is about 30 miles in perimeter with just the two small openings you can see there for tidal change for the lagoon. This is the south side of the island where the Pan Am families and bachelors lived and the British district officer station. This is looking towards the south side where the airport terminal and runways were. This is coming in to land on the south, on the north side, excuse me. This is in front of the passenger terminal at the airport at Canton. This is the launch Pan Am operated to transport the Pan Am workers from the south side to the north side at the airport. And it's the launch Linda was born on. That's the launch going past our front yard. This is about where we were when Linda was born. It scared Taruka, the boat boy, so bad he stalled the engine and we started drifting into the coral. This is the Pan Am Club on the south side. Ray and I having a cool drink. And the movie theater. Pan Am would ship movies down to Canton for us. And the Canton Island Hospital. And the Canton Island School. This is looking towards the finger piers where the flying boats used to land. You can see the theater there in the center of the picture. A fire drill for Pan Am and CAA practice. Various boats would call in at Canton. This is the Manoa Tele from Samoa. This is the President Taylor run aground at the entrance to the Canton Island Lagoon during the war. The superstructure's been cut off as it's in the process of being salvaged. This is from our front porch looking towards the British District Officer's house and facilities. This is looking the other direction from our front porch. These are the only coconut trees on the island. See my coral drying racks on the right hand side? There is a large colony of frigate birds. When they're mating, the pouch under their throat inflates. They are big, beautiful birds. Once through with mating, the pouch goes down. Here the hen is sitting on her nest. We also had gannets. All the birds nested in the Skeviole, which is only about four feet high. Here's a nesting gannet. And the gannet chick. And jillions of terns. The terns just let, nested on the ground, so the hermit crabs often would eat the eggs and the chicks. And the hermit crabs were big. And now to the people. This is Tuawa, who worked from me from when we arrived till we left, two and a half years. 